tea for my dinner. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to part two of our stream. Getting this going here. Do, do, do. Set this up so I can read comments. So for those of you who weren't here for the first part, we didn't get a chance to finish this because one, I got really, really hungry, and two, the sun was coming in and going to make all sorts of sun patterns. So I decided to take a little break, eat some food, let the sun pass, and then continue on with this piece. So that's what we're going to do. We're just gonna pick up where we left off. I have my window still open, so there's cars driving past. So, sorry. Sorry about any noise that you guys might hear. Bruh. Speaking of noise, how's the audio? I have changed mics. So, I played around with some settings and I think I might have got my Yeti mic hooked up. So, let me know. How does the audio sound with this compared to my normal streams? Especially for those who um, were here for the first stream. Yeah. All right. Yay. Well, if it gets too loud or anything like that, um, spam me in the comments saying, the audio, the audio, our ears, our poor ears. So, thank you for... Uh, commenting on the picture. So what I've done so far for those of you just to catch up for those who maybe didn't make the first stream, which is on my YouTube channel. So if you didn't watch the first part of the stream, you can definitely go and watch that part um, after this part or whatever. Um, but I started off with line art, which for those of you who are interested, it's available on my Etsy show, Etsy show, Etsy shop as a digital download. So if you want to color along with me, which a couple of you guys have and have taken me in your Instagram photos and showed me. So thank you. I love seeing them. Um, but yeah, we've just laid down the first layer of color on most everything. So now what I'm going to do is begin to add in the deeper shadows. I'm really going to darken in the crow, darken in down here. I'm um, just start richening, richening it all up, making it all richier in colors <laughs> so and then after i get done that we're going to switch over to some color pencils for some oh, extra little details and things ba -dam, ba -bum -ba. okay so that's what we're doing i'm going to put these markers away which i should have before i started my stream that way they're all in the places they're supposed to be I'm not laying around <clears throat> and then we will get started with everything. Okay. I'm on my new desk. I created a new desk by actually this is the desk that I have is an old door that we used to have on our bathroom and we changed doors um so it's this is actually a door and it's on some bookshelves so it's like three inches taller than my normal desk which is nice because i don't have to sorry about the car um but it's higher up so i don't know it just feels like i'm so much closer to my work <laughs> All right, so someone's saying that the sound is glitchy. Is that is it glitchy for a lot of you guys or just for certain of you guys? Let me know, because I don't know how to go about changing it, but I can try to figure it out. Oh, some people are saying it's glitchy. All right, we'll wait and see if there's a few more people that are saying it's glitching right now. Hmm. Let's see. Okay. Well, let me see. Try that. Let me see if the audio is better after I do that. Let me know. 
So say, yes, it's glitching or sounds fine because everyone's saying yes, no. And I'm like, yes, it's glitching or no, it's fine. <laughs> so not glitching for me, fine for me, sounds fine here, fine here. Okay, good. All right. I know there's going to be a lot of background noises because I have my window open because it's really warm in here. But I did turn my fan off so we don't have that to go with. Okay. Let me fix my light. I'm going to put in my hand. Let's see. Because it's so much higher, there's a little bit of a glare from where I'm. I need, to, I need a little something to sit on. I need a phone book to sit on. Sorry, my chair is probably very squeaky. I have a squeaky chair. Okay, so for the bird, the crow, I'm gonna start darkening him in. Let's see if this is gonna get any darker. We might have to go straight into either. Let's go in with. I'm gonna go in with my. No, cool. cool. We're gonna go with a C9, which is a pretty dark gray color. We get to pull those colors in and then we'll tap in some actual black. Do you have any ideas of what I'm going to do on the first day of October? I was kind of thinking about doing some flowers. A little flower study. I'm not doing a prompt you can do that if you, so if you're having a hard time thinking of what to draw every day for inktober there are several different prompts out there the one i would recommend is going to jake parker's actual website and getting his official prompt and then following along with that which is what i did last year and it, it made it so much easier trying than trying to figure out what to draw every single day it does it limit you a little bit because you know you have to try to work the prompt in there but if you have a hard time coming up with ideas then prompts will definitely be a good thing for you and I have to tell you a couple things about especially if you haven't done Inktober before just to prepare yourself mentally for it oh oh sorry did you guys see that what is with my markers trying to like blurp everywhere and I totally didn't even catch that one. Luckily it was on black so I only got a small thing but every once in a while my markers will get really juicy and they will just puddle out color. It usually happens if you overfill them or if there's a change in pressure which we've gone from really warm days to cooler days. So I'm wondering if that has, sorry you guys, I think everyone and their dog is driving home from work right now. And I think everyone and their dog owns like a really loud truck. But yeah, this color here, I was doing the, I think it was the chains and it almost puddled everywhere. And that would have been disastrous. But luckily, this one puddled, so it kind of bled over into here. But I think I can fix it. I was not even paying attention when I was when I was doing that. You can tell it's going to do that because it, the tip will get really, really juicy and it'll get shiny. And they shouldn't be so wet that they're actually shiny. It's so shiny, cause the ink is puddling out of your pen. Say again? Okay, anyway. <laughs> so what was I talking about? Inktober, some things to think about. Um, if you've never done Inktober before, just know the first couple days, awesome fun. Maybe even the first week. And then after that, just like running a race, you're gonna hit that part where you're just like, I don't wanna do it. Usually for me, it's around day 13, 14, 15, about almost halfway. And I'm tired of, of 
doing this, not the same thing, but, you know, having to remember to do something in this challenge. And it's really easy just to say, I give up. So, um, don't just prepare yourself for that emotionally and mentally, artistically, so that you can push through it. Because that's, I think it's about the halfway mark that a lot of people kind of give up because it's still far enough away from the end of Inktober that, um, you just, the, the ending isn't close enough for you to see. And, and so you get, you're just getting kind of discouraged with everything. And so, um, be prepared that way you can just push through and not give up. Hang on, this is going to make noise. Don't make noise. No noise making. There we go. My setup is falling over. Am I going to do something special for Halloween? Like for art videos? I have a couple of pieces that... I kind of want to do in the month of October that are, you know, a little bit maybe darker in theme or would fit that theme a little bit more. Um, but if you guys have any requests for more of a spooky kind of video or I know someone was asking to for me to do a tutorial on how to draw Gizmo from um, Gremlins. So any kind of those, leave it in the comments, not of this stream, but go to any of my newer videos and leave it as a suggestion in those because at the end of the stream, all of the comments that you guys put on this video are, are erased. Sadly, I wish they didn't. I wish I could go back and read all everyone's comments, but um, they're erased. So if you comment here, I will, there's a good chance I won't see it. Um, but comment on any of my newer videos or Wednesday's video and I will make a little list and if there's one that kind of pops out above the rest, I might add that into October's um, lineup of art videos. Okay, so the crow is much darker. I've tried to also tweak the colors on the live stream from the first stream. Um, everything was a little bit too washed out. I don't know, it might be a little dark this time, the actual video, but at least you can see the colors a bit better than what they were. So, crow is a little bit darker. So now I'm going to work on kind of darkening this area up here. I want this to almost be like black. So I'm going to go in. I think I already went in with Prussian blue, which I think is my darkest blue. So I might go in with my BB. Let's see. It's going to be a BB. B29, is that what you have? No. No, that's not me. Um, was already B8. Okay, so here's a really good example. I don't know if it's going to show up of how the cap does not match what this is. So this is a really dark looking purpley gray, where this one looks like a really vib vibrant. That's not just really dark. If you guys hear rumbling sounds, it's probably just cars and trucks going down the road. I live kind of out in the middle of nowhere, so many of my neighbors have the uh, trucks and cars to get back and forth. It's the cool thing. It's what all the cool kids are driving. that Kirby in the bottom right there. Those are mushrooms. I'm going to be working on them a little bit, but I suppose it kind of looks like Kirby.
So I went through and looked on my Instagram and on Twitter and a bunch of you guys tagged me in your photos to show me what you have been working on and that is so fun. Um, some of you guys are doing different pictures than this. Some of you guys are have downloaded the art and you're working on it. Fun to see your guys' color schemes. So if you have something you're working on, make sure to share it with me. Now I'm thinking you probably can hear my niece in the background. I'm gonna go ahead and shut my window. So hang on. I'll shut the window and we'll be a little quieter here. There. Should be a little bit quieter. So if the sound continues, let me know. Not that there's much I know what to do. I'm such a technically inclined, not inclined, check technically deficient person. So I watch YouTube videos on like how to get the best audio for your streams. And I just make a list of words that I don't know what they mean. And then I, I, I Google those words to find out what those words mean. So you need to like have someone who can just come into my studio and set all the things up for me and just be like, hmm, I'm a streaming genius. Here's all the levels that should be. That would be nice. I don't know what that character is that you're cosplaying. I don't even know exactly certain how to pronounce it. But what is everyone dressing up for if you are dressing up for Halloween? Or if you're going to go to a Comic Con and dressing up. I think that's such a fun thing going to a convention and seeing all the amazing costumes. I dressed up like Kiki from Kiki's Delivery Service. So my gigantic, over big red bow, and then my friend dressed up as a black cat, so she was my Gigi, which was cute. Daryl's going as Pennywise. So who, I haven't seen the movie and I don't think I'm going to, but who likes, which clown do you like better, new Pennywise or old Pennywise? I have to say look-wise, I think the new Pennywise clown kind of looks cooler and scarier, but as I have not seen the movies, I can't determine how scary they were. And not big on watching horror films myself but it's just everywhere everyone's like all the not all the youtubers but it's every go on youtube there's pictures and people talking about it so inevitably it's in my face it has me you know that little bit of curiosity that you have you're like hmm but saying i can't watch the previews without going uh -huh. I think it's Draco Malfoy. That'd be fun. I one time dressed up as um, Tinkerbell. Had the wig and sewed the dress and everything. It was so fun. 
I even had a couple kids come and want to take a picture with me. It's like my, my Disneyland moment. I got to be a Disney fairy. So if you could be a Disney character working at Disneyland, which Disney character would you want to be? Would you want to be a face character or non-face? So that would be like the dream job if I could just pick a job to be. Mm. I don't even care really what I did. I would just love to work at Disneyland. But then I go there during the summer and it's so hot. And I'm like, no, I don't want to work here. Looks like I work in an air conditioned area. Oh, a universal character would be fun, too. There's a lot of different characters. Not last year, but the year before, Bailey and I went to Universal Studios when we were at VidCon. I hadn't been there since before they put in the Dress Up Park ride, so there were so many new things that, uh, um, that I had never seen before. So it was fun to go back, but we have a lot more face characters. Like when I went there a long, long time ago, there was maybe just one or two people walking around as different characters. I would be the shoe from Cinderella. Why? Because. <laughs> It'd be Belle or Lilo from Lilo and Stitch. I would want to be one of the characters that isn't stuck in a location. Because um, some of them, you know, like on an Elsa, they have to be in their throne room if you want to meet them and they just couldn't go up and walk around. So I think being Alice or Mary Poppins would be so much fun. Or Wendy hanging out with Peter. Um, just because I think you get a little bit more freedom in interaction with guests. I think that would be fun. Yeah, you do run the risk of totally being bombarded with uh, guests. But uh, I think it would be fun. Want to be an elf princess from Lord of the Rings. Be Mrs. Potts. Princess Leia, that'd be fun. I've heard they have the Guardians of the Galaxy characters walking around too now. That'd be fun to see them. Man, you guys, there's something in the air. I don't generally have allergies, but... My nose is going crazy. Something's in the air and it doesn't like my nose. It's my new song. I made it up just for you. Let's see. I want to. Olaf is a great character. Olaf would be fun. I would love to see Baymax. I know he's, I think he's at Walt Disney World. You can see Baymax. But Baymax would be one I would wait in quite a line to see. Yes. My one lonely little chow. So when I did the Copic marker challenge where I emptied out the markers, a lot of people commented in it that I was going to throw this marker away and um, maybe people don't know you can refill them. So never fear, I didn't throw the marker away. I refilled it and it's as good as new. Maybe even better. So what's my Instagram? I already got it. Oops, that's upside down. Boom. 
Art Cart Cafe. And if you ever wonder why I called it Art Cart Cafe, I talk about it in depth in the first stream. Oh, Rapunzel would be fun too. I love um, at Disneyland, they have the mm, Fairy Tale Theater, I think it's called, where they come and they reenact um, the play. And so it was the only way that you could actually meet Rapunzel and Flynn Rider. It was because after the play was over, if you hung out long enough, generally they would come out and, and meet you, but you had to have been in and watch the whole play. So my niece, Eva, who has really, really long blonde hair, um, I sewed her a costume to make her look like Rapunzel from Rapunzel. And I'll show you a picture. Well, maybe, maybe you can see it. Anyway, that's her, and then there's Rapunzel. So you can't really see my niece. She has a icon on her face. Anyway, so we waited. That play was so funny. I mean, like, seriously funny, not just like, you know, I'm bored, so I'm going to laugh at it. Like, it was really witty. <laughs> so if you've never been to one of the fairy tale theaters at Disneyland, it's definitely worth it. Especially, you know, if you've been walking a lot and need a little break, you know, grab something cool to drink, something to munch on, and go sit down and watch the play. And, and then you get a chance to meet the characters. So I think they did... They had Belle doing a story and then Rapunzel. So we didn't get to see Belle's story, but I've heard that one's funny too. It might be on, on YouTube if you YouTube it, search it. You might be able to find someone who's recorded the play. That was pretty good. And the Frozen stage show in Disneyland. So good. Like we saw it when it first opened, like the first week. And then when I went back a year later with uh, my mom and dad, they had edited a lot of it out. They kind of cut it down so that um, time-wise it was a little bit shorter. So I kind of missed like the original. The original had a really cool opening and, and a couple other scenes in it that they cut out. But I'd asked some people and they said they just had to, it was too long of a show, so they had to make some edits. Still good though. It's a good, good show. Have I ever seen the movie Hildago? Yes, I have. In fact, I'm thinking about watching it soon. Again, that's a really good movie. Vigo. Is it Vigo Mortensen? Anyway, the guy that played in it, I heard he had such an awesome time filming with that horse that after the movie was over he bought the horse. So that's kind of sweet. My niece just had her birthday. And so for her birthday gift, she's getting horseback riding lessons once a week for, I think it's six weeks. Um, so it's super fun. So I have a feeling we'll be watching all the horse movies. So if you have any other recommendations for horse movies, we've been watching Poor Spirit and then the Spirit TV series on Netflix. We watched that and we're going to watch The Black Stallion. And I think he'll dog. I have to watch it one more time to make sure it's appropriate for her age. I'm pretty sure it is. But if you guys have any other fun um, horsey movies or cartoons or anything, or horse books, she's getting into reading. I was such a horse nut when I was a kid. Oh, so it's kind of fun to share that experience with her. I used to collect Briar horse models and I mean they were like most girls had Barbies and I would have um, Briar horses. So just recently I got a bunch of them out and let her play with them. I was like, oh, I remember 
remember this one. Am I going to teach her how to draw horses? Um, she can already kind of draw them. She watched a couple of my art videos and draws them. She's still, her favorite thing to draw is her flower garden. And I keep telling her that she has to practice and learn something new so she can, we can do another video where she can share her next art thing. But you know how you get really good at something and you get comfortable and you don't want to move on? I think she's, she's at that place. She's like, no, I like my flower garden. <laughs> my Little Pony is having a movie coming up on is it the 5th of this month? Next month? October 5th? Definitely I'm going to be taking her to see that. <sighs> Passing down the geek nerd dim like a good auntie. I use my Briar Horses as reference models when I draw. Me too. I drew my briars quite frequently. Yep, we love Stallion of the Cinnamon Spirit. Has anyone seen the new TV series? It came out with season two just a little bit ago. At first, I was not hip with it. I was just like, oh, it's so different than the movie. But then you gotta let that go. Just, you know, take it as a, a different universe. You know, alternative universe. Alternate universe, whatever that word is. And then, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not bad. It's actually really good. And the writing is really funny. It's got some good characters. So, yeah. I don't think of it as the same, you know, like following the movie or whatnot. I mean, it could. Because in a couple of scenes, it spirits out with his herd out in the field. So it could take place after the movies. But it was pretty fun. What blue is that in the bird? It's a nice color. Um, okay, for you, it looks really blue. Um, it's actually purple. <laughs> so I've got a little bit more blue, but the blues I use, so the bright spots that you see are the fluorescent violet, which is FV2, and then a lot of Prussian blue, which is B39. So we... Any tips for starting a drawing? Um, it, if you don't know what to draw, then you know that's a whole topic on its own, getting inspiration and things like that for figuring what to draw. But if you know what you want to draw, you just don't know how to get going with it, doing a thumbnail can really, really help. So for this one, I keep putting it somewhere, and I don't know where I put it. Here it is. So for this piece, I was just doodling a crow or a raven and I came up with this doodle here Then I scanned it into my computer and did a little mock-up of color to kind of get the colors that I wanted and then once I got the line work went then I just went with it after that so that's kind of how I got started Color amazing. Okay, <laughs> I forgot what I was doing. Hey, frog dog. You are not late. You are here exactly the moment that you want it to be. What is your take on inspiration? Oh, inspiration is so important to my work. And any piece that I'm really working on that I, you know, 
that I have a passion for. It usually has a pretty strong inspiration from something. Um, but I get inspiration from all different sources, not just, you know, one thing. But it can be as simple as a, you know, a word, uh, an image that I see, a dream. A lot of times that will kind of inspire a story, which in turn inspires an illustration. So a lot of times when you'll see pictures that I've done, there's a whole story, um, character design, background, you know, character thing going on there that you, <laughs> no one else knows about. Lots of different places. Do I ever paint in with acrylics? I do, and I, I do every once in a while paint in canvases, and I, I have a ton of canvases. In fact, I have just this huge section of my closet that's just filled with nothing but blank canvases, just waiting for me to paint. And that's one of the things I was thinking about in, implementing soon was doing some acrylic videos. Now that I've got a little bit more space on my desk, I can kind of set that up to to do that. So that might be fun. Yes, songs. I get so much inspiration from songs and music. Oh, that's right. National Velvet is a good movie. I'm thinking about all the different horse movies that we could watch with my niece. I will put that one on my list. I want to learn. I thought you belong. I'm just going to use a lighter shade to kind of blend out some of these harsher contrasts. It's so funny, there's a ton of detail in the actual line art, but I'm making this uh, one so dark that a lot of the details get totally lost. Which I was saying in the, in the first part of the stream that I thought it'd be fun to redraw this one, but instead of having the color scheme, you know, night and cooler desaturated tones, have it during the day and have it really warm and bright tones. I don't know if I'll get around to it, but it would be fun. But if any of you guys have bought the line art from my Etsy shop and want to give it a go, I would love to see the color schemes that you pick for it. So what's Inktober? That is a, um, I lost words, okay. It's a month long challenge where you create something using ink, an ink drawing every single day for the month of October. There is a prompt that you can follow. I have a video where I talk about it. So if you look back in my video archives, I think it was last week, um, it kind of goes into more detail. But as long as you create something with with uh, ink, you can have fun with Inktober. There's a horse movie that was called something like Wild Hearts Can't Be Broken. <gasps> the story about the diving horses. Did you know that was a true story? That was a true... I, I watched that movie and I was like, oh, that's a fun story. And then I read up on it and found out uh, it was actually a true story. That was fantastic. That definitely will be having her watch that one. The story Misty was also a good one. That is. Sorry, there is some booming going downstairs. I think my roommates are moving things around. All right, let's see, where's my really light blue? Yeah, but just a little shading on the moon. so it doesn't look so sun-like. Well, they 
think we are getting close to switching over to color pencils and going back through and just adding the final little touches. The thing with adding color pencils, you want to make sure that you are completely done with Copic markers because once you put your color pencils down, Copic markers don't like to stick to an oil base. Speaking of Inktober and color pencils, I cannot find my Ink Tense color pencil set, which is ink pencils, basically watercolor ink pencils, which would be perfect for Inktober. I can't find them. So everything's kind of in a new direction in my studio because I changed things around. So still trying to figure out everybody's home. So I guess. The home I chose for the ink tent was not a good home because it's definitely not in any of the places that would be logical for them to be at. I'm hoping I have a couple more days before Inktober to find them though. Do I like Edward, Edgar Allan Poe? I like his Quoth the Raven Nevermore poem, uh, but I don't know that I've actually ever read any of his other poems. I'm not opposed to emotionally sad or dark writings. Sometimes that can be very inspirational. <laughs> I like really like sad songs. I like to li I have a whole playlist of just sad songs that I listen to while I'm drawing because it just stirs up so much emotion. So it's really good for me to um, get stuff out. Can I look at a drawing when I'm done? If you tag me in an Instagram photo, I will look at it that way. I will tell you, I get a lot of people that send me photos and then they ask me what they can do to get better. And it's just such a hard answer to, it's such a hard answer to question. It's such a hard question to answer because to be able to, to say something in depth about that, you really have to know the person, you know, where they are as an artist. So I will just tell you the answer that I give everyone, which is a good answer. And it's the answer that artists always gave me, which is just to keep drawing, keep practicing, pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. Um, but above and beyond that, like specific critiquing, I don't generally do. Just for one, it, it uh, is really hard without really getting to know the artist. And two, if I did it for one person, I would be doing it for so many people. And uh, that would take up a lot of time because, yeah. It's not just a quick answer. What is my name? My name is Art. Middle name Ola, last name Kurt. No. Uh, my name is Valerie is my first name. Flynn is my last name. What genre, musical genre do I like? Um, I like a little bits of everything except for rap. Uh, most rap music, I I don't care for it. Yeah, just, it's too aggressive. It's not the emotion that I want. <laughs> so my roommate likes rap and she'll listen to it downstairs and I'm just like, Ugh. so I'm like, headphones, where are headphones? All right, I think I'm ready to push my Copics back and pull up my color pencils. So let me move some things around so hopefully it won't be super loud. Crashing. Okay, I have to 
Drop those down there, that's good. One second as we reorganize everything. Sorry, I had to blow my nose. Alright, I'm better now. Okay, so we're just going to push in a little extra color right here. And if I use my pencil sharpener, I will give you guys a little warning because it will probably be loud. And I don't want to blast anybody's eardrums. So I'm not going to do a lot of color pencil work. I'm just going to add some just fine detailing with some of the shadows and highlights. If you want a sad song, look the song Lifeboat from the musical Heathers. It's actually really good and we'll have to do that. So as being a YouTube artist, what I thought it would be when I started, definitely not. <laughs> it is so awesome, the community. I mean, I heard people talking about YouTube communities and I actually had gotten introduced to YouTube by the beauty community. As you can see that I just always am wearing makeup. No. So, I actually, I don't know if you guys, I don't even think she po posts any more YouTube videos, but Michelle Fan was a beauty guru who would do makeup tutorials to look like different Disney princesses. And I was, it was when I was going to do Tinkerbell, and I was trying to find a makeup tutorial for being Tinkerbell. And I thought, hey, I'll check out this YouTube. So I went and found hers, and then I just began watching all her videos because she did all these different princesses and things like that. And then from there, I got into the crafting scene. So I was watching all these people make like little clay charms and little felt plushies and things like that. And so really got hooked into that. Watched that for probably a year. And everyone was talking about how awesome the crafting community was. And so then when I started my YouTube channel, it was just amazing how many artists out there would chat with you and talk with you and, and how many good ideas that you could bounce off each other and collaborations and things like that. And not only being able to encourage other artists, but the immense amount of encouragement that I get from you guys is so, it just blows me away. In fact, I was telling my roommate today between the first stream and this stream, I had gone through and was reading my emails and had gotten several emails from people who watch my channel today and just I was almost in tears, you guys. How sweet you all, all of you guys are. I don't want to jinx this channel, but we do not have any trolls. Very few. I am just like, don't tell them that they forgot to come here, but we don't have any trolls. With, with an occasional troll, but not bad. Just, I'd say 99.9% .9 of everyone who watches these videos and comments is an encourager, which is awesome because I love to encourage people and it's wonderful to be encouraged back. So I think that's probably the biggest surprise because I didn't imagine I would have 
such an emotional connection with people because you hear like youtubers and they're just like i love you guys so much and i'm like yeah you don't even know who i am no youtubers really do care about the people that are watching you know whether you can comment or not it's humbling to know that 10 people 20 people 100 people a thousand people care about the thought that i have in my mind that the picture that i draw on the paper people will sit for several hours to just to watch me very slowly and meticulously create this picture and listen to me try to have somewhat of an intelligent conversation while I work and that that just makes me happy <laughs> so that was probably yeah the biggest and most pleasant surprise about being a youtuber the only trolls are puppy and branch and they're awesome we let trolls like that in. Oh, that'd be a fun video. Kind of clickbait, but like, I have trolls on my channel. And then it's a tutorial on how to draw Poppy and Branch. Yeah. I'm afraid if you go anywhere on the internet, you will always find a troll. There are mean people, and I have had, I guess maybe I don't see them because I have some, I have words tagged that if people use them, they just end up in my spam. And I just really never pay attention to them because for every grumpy, mean, you, you know, swear word filled comment that I get, there's hundreds of, of really nice ones. So those are the ones I try to focus on. But yeah, if you start a YouTube channel or any kind of social media, you have to get a little bit of a tough skin. Because there's just the people that, that's just their, their goal in life is to be mean. But those are the people that really don't care. They're just wanting to say things. I think the ones that, the comments that make me the saddest are the ones from people who are frustrated with the tutorial, they can't get it, and they want to give up. Those ones are the, are the hard ones for me, because I'm like, no, don't give up. Want. Oh, this looks so dark in the actual video. <laughs> it's not that dark in real life. But that's okay. Alright. Oh, a little bit of a gray. Ooh, that's a nice color. I like that color. This is a nice color. So this is a Prismacolor 71 gray. I'm probably going to have to sharpen this one. So I'm going to attempt to mute my microphone so that you don't hear it. So um, I'm going to mute this for a second. But just in case, if you're wearing headphones or earbuds, you might want to pop them out or turn your volume down a little bit because I'm going to sharpen this. So here we go. Mute. Bam, did that work? <laughs> Hopefully it worked. Please don't ever stop saying God bless you at the end of your videos. I won't. And there's a funny story about that. So I know a lot of you guys who watch my videos um, are not religious or, you know, whatever. You guys are extremely kind about that. Uh, every once in a while I'll have people that will, you know, ask me not to say that. And I had this one person saying that, you know, in the comment, please don't, because it offends me. And this other person commented underneath, they're very nice, but they said, oh, I can't remember the name. And if, and if you're one of these people, I really appreciate the comment, but they explained that they were an atheist, they didn't believe in God, but how it encouraged them that I said that and that, um, that they didn't take that offensively that I said, God bless you, um, 
And I thought it was very fun. Like, this, this is what I love. Like I was saying about community, that you don't have to be this person and think only this or this person and think only this to belong. That we can just all hang out and be cool with, you know, whatever viewpoint we have on life or things like that. That we have a common bond in art. I think that's, I think that's so awesome to be able to have conversations with people around the world. It's fantastic. Something that, what, 10 years ago, we would have never thought possible. But now we can. Am I going to be live streaming again soon? I'm hoping to do a live stream on Saturday. I have a video planned for Saturday. Um, so if I post that, I might do a live stream as well, simply because on Sunday is my birthday. And I usually like to have a birthday stream um, just because I like to give things away. And so a stream is a fun way to do that. So I'm thinking about doing that on Saturday. If it's not boiling hot. Well, let's check the temperatures because that's why I had to stop live streaming during the summer because it was just so, it was like 77 degrees here, you guys, and that was really hot, but it gets really stuffy when it gets hot at my house outside, a little bit warm, it gets in insane inside. So it's supposed to be raining on Saturday, which is fantastic. It's supposed to be rain on Sunday, my birthday. So yeah, as far as it looks right now, I will be streaming on Saturday and that will be a fun stream that you're going to want to definitely see if you can check out because I'll have some fun, some fun stuff planned. Hopefully. If I can pull it off. Thank you for my happy early birthdays. It's going to be my big big birthday. It's a big, it's a big number. Dare I say it? I'm going to be 20 years old. Two times. Yeah. I'm going to be 40. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Never thought I'd be 40, but I'm going to be 40. I don't act like I'm 40, but that's okay too. When I was a kid, I always thought 40 was like old person age. Like, my grandparents are 40. Now that I'm 40, I'm like, ah, 40's easy. See, your 20s are challenging because <clears throat> the world expects you to be adult and you have to fake like, like you know how to be an adult, but really you have no clue how to be an adult until, you know, you're in your mid-20s. And then in your 30s, you finally got an idea, hopefully, how to how to attempt to adult. And, and that's the time where it's really easy to just lose focus of, 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 of stuff. You know, like your 20 is young and 40 is old, so you're kind of trying to get things done. And, and then you realize, my 30s are almost over. I'm going to be 40. Then you realize by the time you're 40, you really kind of have an idea of how adulting is done and, and you have some really good life experience and you can begin sharing that life experience with people. You think, Hey, I've been there, I've done that. And that is fun to me is that people will talk with me about going through, you know, things in their lives. And I'm like, oh, I've been there. Okay, this is what you're, this is what is going to happen, and share some ideas and thoughts with them. I think life has been a little bit different for me because I've never been married, I've never had kids of my own. So a lot of the things that my my friends have gotten to do, they've all gotten married, they've all had families, and maybe that ages you a bit more. Maybe that's why I don't feel like I'm forty. That's my thoughts. That's all I got to say about that. I don't know. I can't can't quite figure out where I was going with that one. All the joys of live stream. I'm like, okay, I just said something, but can't take it back. Can't figure out why I said it.
Yes, I can adopt children. And I've thought about it, definitely. Right now, I live in a studio apartment in uh, a house with my roommates. When I say studio apartment, I live in my studio. So this room that you're seeing right here, this is my house. This is, yeah, this is it. Not much room for for kids right now. But I feel if the time ever comes, becomes right that God wants me to have to, to adopt or give home to some kids that he will provide all the things I need for it, which will be awesome. I think it would be fun because, you know, I'm getting to the age now where I'm realizing, you know, probably not going to be, you know, even if I ever did get married, the chances of me getting married and having kids, um, probably not going to happen. And now I'm getting to the point going, you know, that means I probably won't have grandkids because if you don't have kids, you can't have grandkids. So I think it would be fun if I do adopt kids to adopt like older kids that think I don't have you know that family to go home to from college for Christmas because I don't have kids to come home for Christmas so I think that'd be kind of besides I don't know if I have the energy for a baby <laughs> and someone who's young can take care of me in my old age I find my teeth <laughs> can always borrow my friends. That's actually what I've done. Um, Eva, my niece, is not my blood niece. She's my roommate's little girl. And that has been so fun because she lives downstairs. So I've gotten to experience all the the fun things of uh, you know, raising, getting to see a little kid grow up because she's been here since she's been a month old. So she's kind of like, like my kid, you know. So that has been fun. And my mom and dad have adopted her as you know, their grandkid and she calls them grandma and grandpa Flynn. And so it's really fun. And I didn't mean to make this sad. So you guys are like, Oh, that's really sad. No, it's not sad. It's just a different life journey. Everyone has, has, has a different adventure that they get to go on. And this is mine. Um, and I'm not sad about it. It's a good adventure because I've gotten to do a lot of things that I know if I had, uh, you know, a family that I might not have been able to do. Bam. Don't be sad. See, this is what happens when live streaming is late and hot in my room. Because it's 67 degrees outside, so it's hot in here. I get all real on you. You guys can call me Mama Flynn if you want. <laughs> I'll be your mother. What will happen with all the white space? It's just going to stay white. I think that's just kind of, um, I mean, you could color it all black or you could put in a background in the, in the back of it. Um, I think I'm just going to keep mine white. I think it just has this really fun contrast to it. We'll kind of see. <laughs> you guys are sweet. All right, so the rock. Let's blend this out just a little bit. You little sloppy fella. Hey there, sloppy fella. So it's getting a little bit of a texture. I don't know if you guys can see that very well from the webcam. 
but going over colored pencil with a lighter color, either, either with a colorless blender or a lighter, like I'm using a really light gray, kind of smooth that texture out because Copics have such a smooth texture. Um, we don't want to distract from the piece by introducing a ton of texture. I'm going to push this a little bit hard and that burnishes that down. But make sure you like what you have because once you burnish it down, it's really hard to lay in color over top of it because you're kind of flattening the paper out. I'm going to go with the white and just kind of crisp up some of my edges in here. What is my favorite animal? So you got to give me categories because I got too many favorite animals. So we'll pick a category. And my favorite, since you said you like wolves, my favorite um, canine animal would be a fox. I love foxes. But if I was going, oh, see, I don't even know. If I was to buy like earrings with animals on it. Um, sea turtles. Love sea turtles. I like all sorts of animals. Like my favorite thing right now is watching kitten live streams. Like the people that are fostering kittens and they put the webcam and you can just watch kittens play. <sighs> oh my heart. So much cuteness. Yep. Question, are you open to tutorial requests? If you have a tutorial that you're wanting, I definitely love hearing your guys' requests. But what you need to do is go to one of my newer videos, not the live stream video, but a newer video, and put it in the comment section. That way I'll find it and I can put it on my list. Um, so the way requests work is generally I take requests if they have been requested multiple times by multiple people. Um, then I throw them out there um, or if you just say something I'm like oh inspiration to do this so that happens too watch the tiger guy I mean they have videos of live tigers oh that's cool yes I was one of those people that watched the giraffe cam of the mama giraffe who's gonna have a baby and like four months waiting <laughs> and then when she had the baby I missed it because I gave up <laughs> and then I was gonna watch this bald eagle cam but within the first month like I was setting up over the nest and then like the first whatever a little bit of it one of the eagles stood on the camera and knocked it down and they couldn't go reset it up because it would disturb the the eagles so they have to wait till next year this so was my favorite domestic animal my cat person I love cats unfortunately I can't have any right now but it's okay because I have friends who have cats and I go love on them. Carly, you have purple hair too? Oh, that's fun. I love being able to color my hair. That's it's very fun to see the reactions of people, the conversations you get with, with people. Probably the best one was this little granny lady that goes to my church. And she came up to me and said, oh, honey, I love your hair. I, I just think I would love to have blue hair. And I said, well, you should totally do that. It'd be fun. She said, I just might. So she came back. 
she came back the next week to church and she had gone to the store and got one of those hairspray, you know, like for Halloween and she'd gotten blue and she had sprayed, it was the best thing ever, but she'd sprayed her hair blue and she was so proud of it. I wasn't brave enough to do permanent, but this is fun. So we bonded. That was great. Can I do a tutorial on how to draw a Gypsy Vanner horse? I want to. That's on my list because Gypsy Vanners are so beautiful. Alright, now let's work on these flowers a little bit. By far the most embarrassing thing you experienced when you were at school. Hmm. Well, saying I was homeschooled, there wasn't much opportunity to be embarrassed. But I will say, one time when I was in first grade, there was this, I don't know if it was, it's like a Wednesday night kids thing that met at our church. And I was following all the kids, and we were in two rows, but I was not paying attention. And I got into the boys' line by mistake. <laughs> that one, I was, that was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> now, you don't have too many embarrassing moments when you're homeschooled. Yep. But believe me, I've had my fair share of embarrassing moments in real life. When I get older, I'm going to dye my hair blonde with green bangs. That'll be cool. I'm thinking about going red next. I, I mean, I'm going to stick with purple for a while because I still have a big bottle of purple dye left. But I think after that, I'm going to go like, not like, oh, you have red hair, like red hair like scarlet and I don't think I'm gonna do the whole kind of like how I do with the purple where it's kind of mixed in with everything I don't know I think it'd be kind of fun but I've heard red hair is really hard to keep vibrant like it fades really fast so I like purple because it starts off really deep kind of bluish purple and then fades into just regular purple and then goes into like this really pretty lavender there are some videos that I have in the past, I used to dye my hair like multiple colors, and it would fade. Like, my favorite was I would have like this dark blue, dark teal, and dark purple, and I think like a dark magenta. And so it was just oh, it was so much fun for like the first week, and then it would start fading. And I used to get annoyed with it, but then I went back and rewatched this one video because I was trying to find out something. Anyway, it had faded, and it was like like mother of pearl like it was really light lavenderish blue into pinks my hair looked like cotton candy it was so cool i was like wow i didn't even know i just thought it was all faded and gross and no it looked, it looked fun but that takes a lot of bleaching my hair doesn't like it when i bleach it too much get a little grumpy with me. What type of dye do I use for my hair? I use just the cheap stuff you buy like at Walmart. I think it's it's, it's really common in the United States. If you guys said it, I would be like totally like that's it um not spark um cheap hair dye let's google cheap hair dye because that's cheap 
keep your die. It's not spark. It's giving me all normal hair color like blue. Let's go cheap hair dye blue. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm, not seeing it. Let's go shop. Hang on. These are the important questions that you have to answer. Well, while, while Skyping, not Skyping, we're not Skyping, we're streaming. Yeah. This is what you come for, right? Oh, come on. It's Splat. That's it. Splat. That's the brand I use. And when I say cheap, I don't mean like it's a cheap product. I bought a really expensive product and Splat worked better for my hair. It stayed in my hair a lot longer than the expensive stuff. I mean cheap because it is literally less expensive. So that's what I use. And my nose. You guys have to blow my nose again. I apologize. I'm going to mute it so you don't hear because... I'm sorry, me blowing my nose is not what you guys want to hear. So I'm going to mute this. Hopefully muting it does work. So hold on. There, much better. I do not know what's going on with my nose. Except there's something in the air. Something in the air that doesn't like me. Bye, Haley. Thanks for hanging out with us. How am I still live? I am still live because we took a break. If you actually notice, there are two live streams today. So... The main reason I stopped was because the sun was setting and cast these great big sunbeams across my desk and it's really hard to draw when they're like that. So I could have covered it up with a towel or something over my window, but I was really hungry. So I decided I would go and make some food because some of you guys are talking about tacos. So I wanted to go eat tacos. So that's what we did. We all took a break. And then we came back. It's all pretty exciting. I'm going to make my keyhole a little bit darker. I don't know if you guys notice there's a little keyhole in the tree. Why is there a keyhole in the tree? Because mm -hmm. I feel like putting a keyhole in the tree. What kind of stylus do I use when I'm drawing digitally? I use well, this one. I actually just came with my Wacom tablet. That's kind of the bigger, chunkier one. You can buy stylus for you know diff different stylus, but I like this one. It's what works. I've never gotten a stylus to draw like you can on your iPad and stuff. Um, but I've never done it. What is my favorite food? I like, I like lots of different kinds of foods. Love Chinese, love sushi, um, love Mexican. Like if I'm having just a really bad, rotten, horrible, no good day and I just want to medicate with food because that's what I do, a bacon cheeseburger with french fries and a strawberry milkshake. But yeah, that's the comfort food. Don't do that as often as I used to because comfort food sticks with me a little bit longer than it used to.
Bye, puppy lover. Have a good time at school tomorrow. Jacob Hicks says, I don't think I will, I know that I won't be ever this good. You keep working and you will be better. There are so many young artists out there that are so amazing. And it's just because I did not push myself as hard as I should have when I was in my 20s. I would have pushed myself out of my comfort zone. I, I drew all the time, but I drew what I was comfortable with instead of making myself study things that I wasn't good at drawing. And being not critical of my art, but looking at my art and going, what can I do to make it better? You get out of your art what you put into it. And just remember to let yourself learn. It's nothing of overnight lesson or a one-time, you know, stint of drawing is going to make you an amazing artist. It's effort, time, more time, and a little bit more effort. And always knowing that you're going to improve. Is it bad that when I go to a fast food place, I get a chocolate shake and dip my fries and sometimes my chicken in my fry? That is the best thing ever. Wendy's milkshake or the little f chocolate freezy thing. Oh, what's it called? Um, like a... The chocolate freezy thing. Dip in there. Oh, that's the best. I can't talk about it because it'll make me want to jump in my car. And go get food because obviously tacos wasn't enough for me tonight. I know you're not supposed to ask, but how old are you? Your art is amazing. How long have you been drawing? So, actually, I've already answered this earlier, so it's okay to ask because I've already told everyone. So, this Sunday, I will be turning the big 40. And I've been drawing, drawing, drawing since I was three, but serious about drawing since my mid-teens. I mean, like, okay, this is something that I kind of want to do with my life. So when I was, you know, 13, 14, really started practicing daily. And when I say practicing, just drawing the things I love to draw every day. But still, any kind of drawing, whether you're pushing yourself to draw something you don't like to draw or you're just drawing what you love to draw, if you're drawing every single day, you're going to get better. Then when I was in my 20s is when I thought, hmm, I, I really want to kind of push myself to draw things that I'm not good at and improve. Unfortunately, when I was in the 20s, I had so much work that I had to do, you know, paying bills and things, that I wasn't able to devote a lot of time to it. So it's been the last 15, 20 years that I have really been devoting you know, I've been able to devote a good amount of time to actual creating and drawing and learning. So, yeah. Thank you for the happy birthdays. Make sure to tune in on Saturday. Hopefully, we'll be having a birthday stream a day early. Celebrating my own birthday. Um, but I've got a couple things I want to give away. So, make sure you're there for the stream. I like how the flowers go outside of the border. Thank you. I wanted something that kind of creeped up. Originally, I was just going to have the kind of the tree come out a little bit, but nothing else. And I thought some creeping flowers would be cool. So. It's an icy. Icy. Is that what it's called? An icy? Frost? Frosty? I still can't remember what the. I guess it's a good reason to go to Wendy's so I, for knowledge purposes and know what those things are called. Would I ever review Prismacolor markers? Maybe. Um, to review things is expensive because you have to 
purchase the items to review. Sometimes I review things um, because the companies actually send them to me, which is an amazing, awesome perk of having a YouTube channel. Um, so I can review those. So like the pro markers that I have and the color it markers that I have, um, I was able to review those because um, those companies were so nice to send them to me. Other things I review, I've had to save up and purchase. So my ink tense markers are not markers, but color pencils that I have. And then my Faber Castell color pencils, I purchased those. Um, but to do a really good review, you kind of have to, you know, get a couple of them. So doing markers is a bit of a challenge just because they are so expensive and I'm going to spend my money on markers. I kind of want it to finish my collection. So yeah. But if Prismacolor wants to throw me some markers, I'd, I'd review them. Wouldn't mind doing that at all. But I think if you check out Bailey J's channel, she has a really good review on a whole bunch of different markers, which I think most of them she went out and purchased for the review herself. So um, if you're kind of wanting to see that perspective, check out her channel. So now you can see why most artists, when they do these in-depth pictures, do a speed drawing because it's a very slow process. I bought some Bombay inks for Inktober. That's cool. I bought some, oops, I guess, where are you? There you are. <laughs> some Windsor Newton inks. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think eight of these different colors. So maybe playing around with them. I don't know though, now that I'm, after I bought them, now I'm kind of thinking I want to stick with strictly black and white for Inktober, just because it's my hopes to take all the pictures I've done for Inktober and put them into a little um, booklet and I can get them made so much more cost efficient if it's black and white so I can keep the price down on my shop for you guys. But if they're colored, it kind of it really almost doubles the price of how much the books are, will be. So I don't know, I'm kind of thinking about that. Did I get to keep the Pablo 22 inch digital tablet that I reviewed? I did. In fact, it's sitting back that way. Um, I know that I have a big desk. I could technically set it up, but I'm just, I have my Wycom Cintiq tablet that I'm using. So, and I really like my Wycom. I liked both of them, but I'm, I'm really used to this size. I think that the Purple Coast is really big. In fact, I don't know if you guys remember, but I, I gave one away. They actually sent me two of them, which is <laughs> pretty awesome. So I was, I gave one of them away and the person who won it messaged me back going, this is really big. I was like, I know, <laughs> it's massively huge tablets. Um, and I just think it would dwarf my little studio. Did you know you can buy, buy did you, do you, bleh, let me try reading English. Do you know if you can use brown micron pens? Yes, you can. You can use any kind of ink you want. Uh, you can even, if you go to Jake Parker's website, which I think I have the link in my Inktober video that I posted a, like a week ago, um, he has all the the official rules, which are really easy. So just to create an ink drawing every single day in the month uh, of October and post it using hashtags. And you could create the piece using ink. Um, but he does say that you can lay down a foundation of pencil sketch first and then go over top and ink if you want to. The whole purpose of ink October is to get you to push yourself 
in ink drawing because with ink if you make a mistake you can't really necessarily erase it um, so it's, it's a permanent thing it's to help you become more confident as an artist so it really has nothing to do with what color ink you use just that it's that more permanent thing do you have any advice for getting over fears of artistic experimentation yes get a big stack of paper and just give yourself like 30 seconds to draw a picture on each one doesn't matter if you finished or not kind of like the, the the 10 minute one minute 10 second challenge that I did 10 seconds a little bit on the insane crazy side but give yourself you know a minute to 30 seconds to draw something and then put the paper down and after about you know 10, 12 times of doing this, hopefully you'll get over the fear of I'm wasting paper. Cause that's, that's the biggest thing we're worried about is that we're worried that we're wasting paper or supplies or time. And it's not, even if this turns out a failure, if I'm coloring on this and I spill ink on this or my marker blobs ink and it ruins the whole piece, it's not a failure because even in doing this, I've learned some things. Like I really pushed myself into getting this texture here. I had never really gotten this texture before like that, the way I wanted it. And I finally got, got, got the way I went. I learned how to do it. So that's where in this picture I've grown as an artist is in this right here. If I had never done this picture, I would never have succeeded in finally getting this, this technique, which I only got here. Didn't really get it here. I'm still working on it down here, but I got it here. So that's what I learned. I wouldn't have learned it had I tried. So no matter what happens to this picture, I'm a better artist now because of this. So we, we are afraid to experiment with art because a lot of times we're afraid that we're going to mess up and now I've just wasted an hour of my life or a sketchbook or whatever. No, it's not wasted. You learned something. You tried something new. You figured out something new. Even if you didn't figure anything out, you're one picture closer to figuring it out. Everything you do in life you're, makes you one step closer to achieving that goal. Baking chocolate chip cookies. Every time you do that, you get one chocolate chip cookie closer to making the best chocolate co chip cookie. I should go make chocolate. I probably want to go eat now. I'm using a lot of food analogies in my conversation. Tacos have forsaken me. I printed out several lists. The original prompt. I like... The Wayward Sisters Inktober prompt. It's a fantasy prompt. That's great. Yeah, there's a ton of different prompts out there. You can just kind of Google art prompts. Even if you don't want to do Inktober, like say you can't do it, but you want to do something, you know, in September or something in November, you just, they have just random month prompts that are not geared specifically to a certain month. I always just Google them and find out what what they're what they're doing. Okay, so this is all really similar. So I'm going to keep going here with my black really start pushing in some darker shades and kind of gradient this up so it's not just the same sorry you can't eat tacos right now princess leia for my birthday one year, I wanted tacos for my birthday dinner. And I woke up that morning, I think it was like my 18th or 19th birthday. Anyway, I woke up and I stretched. And when I stretched, I heard this, I literally heard this. And my neck was like this. That's, I mean, it was just like, mm -hmm. I could not straighten my neck. I could not physically hold my head up. My, whatever I did to that muscle, I had no strength in my muscles. And so if I wanted to hold my head up, I just actually had to literally hold it up like this to be able to look around. <laughs> oh, it hurts so bad. So for my birthday, we got to go to the chiropractor. 
That's something I can say. And then we went home to eat tacos and trying to eat a taco when your head's turned was challenging. So I mushed my tacos up and had taco salad. What's my taco story? You pronounced my name right. Yay. Do I like Chick-fil-A? Mm. Maybe I've eaten there once. We don't have Chick-fil-A's where I live. I think we got our first Chick-fil-A in, but it's like five hours away, so. I'm sure you would like them. Um, I just don't have one near me. When will you find true love? don't know. Katie's got a riddle for us. Okay. Riddle me this. Riddle me that. Go, Katie. Give me the riddle. I'm really bad at riddles. I'm waiting, Katie. Thank you, wicked, wicked pixie art. It's kind of a fun little composition. I think I need to send you a Chick-fil-A, like ASAP. Do they deliver Chick-fil-A? Do you deliver five hours away? That's the only bummer part about being, like, in the middle of nowhere, is that no one delivers to us. Crazy Kitten, he's back! Alright. Katie Johnson's riddle. He's a father who marries wives, but he always be a bachelor. What am I? Oh, that's a real riddle. I was hoping it was a joke riddle. I don't know, Katie. What is it? Hello, Prince. I don't know. Is your day job an art teacher? I have been an art teacher um, before. Um, I haven't. I haven't been teaching art locally for a while. I had to stop my art teacher job just because I couldn't do that and do um, all the YouTube stuff that I needed to do. So I had to make a choice. So I chose you guys. Oh, the answer is a priest, because a priest marries people. These kind of riddles make my brain hurt, like the the common sense ones. Huh? I'm better at like funny joke ones, like. Where does a king keep his armies? Up his sleeves. <laughs> or what happens when you feed a cat a ball of yarn? She has mittens. <laughs> so funny. All right, I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a bit more of a gradient, so it goes from that kind of royal dark blue into the black, which is nice. Just a little bit more, a little more down. Do I support what my, bleh. Can I talk English? No. Uh, do you support yourself with your art or do you have a day job? No, this is my job. I, four years ago, I had been working as a job. I had, um, I was, worked in a ministry working with children 
and I was this assistant minister, uh, ministry assistant, and we were getting a new director, but they had to come in and intern, and I knew that they couldn't have an intern plus a ministry assistant, so I went ahead and stepped down from my position so that they could um, get the training for the new director. So I was like, hmm, what am I going to do with my life? And I knew this was coming, so I saved up a bunch of money and just, uh, for about a year or so, and I had about six months saved up where I could not have to have a monthly paycheck, and I decided I would give myself six months to make it as an artist. And I have, I, because I share a house with a couple other people, and I don't have a lot of, you know, I don't have like a fancy car or anything like that. My cost of living is, is not super high. So I knew I could have six months that I could either look for a job. Oh, I found! I found my intense pencil. They were with the yellow color pencils because that doesn't make sense. Anyway, I had to grasp. I'm just excited that I found them. So for six months, I decided to give art a try. And I had a monthly budget. I had to make this much money during a month to be able to pay bills without having to dip into my savings account. And so I did tons of commissions and stuff like that. But it was just like, you never knew if the next month you would have the money you needed to pay your bills, which is the life of, of being a self-employed artist. You, It's not a guaranteed thing. Um, and at this time, I was not doing... YouTube as a profession. I had the YouTube channel, but I was like uploading once or twice a month. I was not consistent at it. Um, so I had the idea that I would make art videos for schools because I knew a lot of schools just don't have the budget to hire an art teacher. And I thought, well, that might be a good resource for schools if they had art classes on a DVD. Um, that they could just plug the DVD in and I could teach through a video. And I thought it might be also good for school families that just don't have that resource. So and I talk a little bit about this in the Draw My Life video. So to test the videos out, I was making them and putting, putting them on YouTube. I was also teaching them because I was teaching a homeschool co-op group art lessons. So I had like 40 students. And so I was kind of taking those lesson plans and, and gearing them into the, the, the teaching DVDs I was going to create. So I would put them on YouTube so my students who missed the class could go back and watch it. And also I was kind of seeing how the editing thing works. And so I'd been doing that up to that point. And then I started reading up on becoming a YouTube partner and monetizing your videos. And I thought, well, there's... You know, you'd have to have so many people watching your videos to make any kind of money. But I thought, you know, even if it takes, uh, you know, six months before I get anything from YouTube, because you have to have a certain amount of money before they actually cut you a check. I thought, you know, it's worth a try. So I went ahead. It was in October, I think four years ago. I'd have to look, look back at it. But I went ahead and monetized and became a YouTube partner and... Within two months, I was hitting the quota mark for that and just kept getting better and better. And, and the key to doing YouTube professionally, I mean, there's there's tons of things about doing YouTube as a job, but one of the big things is to have a set and planned schedule um, so that people know when you are uploading a video. So you, you had to really commit to it. Are you going to do it once a week? Are you going to do it twice a week? So originally, I... I didn't have a set schedule, but once I finally said, okay, I'm going to upload three times a week and I picked my days. Um, that's really when the channel got going well and it's been pretty good ever since. Um, YouTube definitely has its ups and downs as far as, um, making actual money off of YouTube. It's definitely not as easy as it used to be. And I, I, I feel that if I would have started now I think it would have had a harder time at it. They're working out some of their problems, but it can be a challenge. But it's 
I love doing it and it's fun. That's worth the, worth the hard work. Tomorrow's getting a sore throat. Don't get a sore throat. Hot lemon and honey water. Like get some hot water and put some lemon juice in it and some honey and drink that. Cause I was getting a sore throat like four days ago and I was like, oh. and lots of vitamin C and, and garlic tablets. Boom. Almost hundred percent better. Almost. Okay. We had lots of homeschoolers on here. Or those wanting to be homeschooled. Okay. What am I going to do? A little bit more shading here. Thinking about my, my raven's eyeball. What do I want to do about it? What color? So I don't want to lose like the detail of the eye. So I'm thinking kind of a a yellow. And I think even after I finish this tonight, usually what happens is when I'm doing a finished piece like this, I'll let it sit for a couple of days and just kind of look at it. And then I will go back and make any final adjustments and touch ups a couple of days later. So never feel like you have to rush a picture. Sometimes it just needs to rest and you can kind of think about it a little bit. So let's go ahead and do the ribbon because I'm excited about that. And I said I'm going to make it a bright ribbon. I don't know that I want to make it a warm red. I think, though, I think I want to make it a cool red. So let's look here. I'm thinking 545. This is the part you don't want to have your marker puddle on you. See that just bright color just wants to draw your attention up. Let's sneeze. Hang on. <coughs> I tried to make a, a quiet sneeze so I wouldn't blow out people's ears drums with my major sneeze attacks. Well, I think I'm to the point where I'm going to let this rest. And kind of ponder it over the next couple of days to see if there's anything else I want to add to it. I, I know there's a couple little finishing touches. I'll probably go in with some more darks on the wood and kind of fix that a bit. And probably a little bit more in the feathers, but before I get into those final, final details, I think I'm going to let it rest for the night. And. Yeah, so what I'll do is when I'm finished with it, I will take a picture and post it to my Instagram and Twitter. So if you want to follow me on those, I have links to those in the description of the videos. So you can follow me on Instagram and all of that fun stuff. Um, tomorrow I won't be live streaming because I'm going to be working on the video for Wednesday, which is the um, next addition to the Choose Your Adventure Story with Amelia. So, oh, I was supposed to do the writing tonight. Mm, that didn't happen. It was 8.30. So. Mm. so I'll be working on that tomorrow. So Wednesday will be the next Adventures with Amelia. And then on Saturday, I'm going to be doing a live stream again, hopefully, 
um, so hopefully you guys can join in on that because I'm gonna like to it'll be my birthday stream and I always like to give stuff away on my birthday so and, and I don't know what time that'll be so if you haven't subscribed to my channel make sure to hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell and that way you'll get notifications as soon as I start streaming or upload a video well thank you guys for hanging out in my stream it was a fun stream for part two if you missed part one it's on my channel so you can go back and watch it or if you missed the beginning part of this stream you can go back and check out that stream as well all right i'm gonna go and blow my nose again and maybe eat another taco before bed because that's just a recipe to guarantee good dreams is having spicy mexican food and then going to bed i like that so well thank you guys for hanging out with me in this video and until next time god bless you guys and we'll see you in another video i gotta find the button to push okay